everybody, Jennifer Baker here. Have you seen those super cool book nooks that people make? You can create a little world of your own and keep it on a shelf. They are so cool. And I could have just made one and showed it off like I feel like we normally see people do, but you all know my thing is to teach you how to make these things yourself. So you can actually make it and have it, not just wish you could. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a simple yet sturdy box for your own book nook. I even have some decoration ideas to share too, including how to add an infinity mirror easily and safely. So come with me and we will get started. Now there are lots of ways to decorate a project like this, but first you need the book nook itself. You can use my free book nook design files over at jennifermaker.com 486 to make the exterior out of two millimeter chipboard using a Cricut maker and a knife blade, or you can cut standard 1 8 inch MDF board on a laser cutter like a Glowforge. Either way works. It will take more time and patience to cut chipboard on a cutting machine, so I'm gonna share my tips on that in this video for you. So for the inside of your book nook, I think they look so much cooler when you can add depth to them so that the scene inside really comes alive, like my enchanted forest book nook. You can even make an infinity mirror for your book nook, which is my favorite way to create depth. I got this idea from a girl named Martina who makes fun DIY videos of really fantastically nerdy things. Make sure to check out her channel. She's awesome. Now with a few special tricks, which I will show you in this video, you won't even see yourself in the infinity mirror. Combine the mirror with my lighting ideas and theme figures or decorations and you will practically fall right into the scene. This is so cool. I know you're gonna love it. You can find all the tools, materials, and steps that I used to create this enchanted forest book nook below this video or in my tutorial at jennifermaker.com slash DIY book nook. And if you want to just buy or make other things, simply look for 1 12th scale dollhouse miniatures. They will look great in your book nook. Now let's make our own little world to fit right on a shelf. Step one, get my free DIY book nook design files. You have several options for cutting the pieces for your book nook. First, you can download my free book nook files from my library. Just go to jennifermaker.com 486 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 486, and when you find it, click it to download the zip file. Now unzip the file. If you're not sure how to do that, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how. If you want to cut the pieces by hand, open the PDF folder and print the included file to trace and cut with a craft knife and a self-healing mat. There's also a printable PDF reference sheet with labels to keep the pieces straight. If you're going to use a laser cutter like a Glowforge, open the SVG folder and use the file with Glowforge in the title. If you're using a Cricut cutting machine like I am, upload the main SVG file to Cricut Design Space and add it to your canvas and then go on to step two. If you're using a laser cutter like a Glowforge, upload the SVG file with Glowforge in the name. You'll need to move the pieces around your canvas to fit. Once that's done, put 1 8 inch MDF or 1 8 inch medium draft board in your Glowforge and choose medium draft board as your material. And then just cut. Easy peasy. This box will take three sheets of MDF or draft board. Step 2. Prepare and cut your DIY book nook designs. Here's my file in Cricut Design Space. Zoom out to see all of the pieces by clicking the minus sign. The yellow pieces create the book nook box. The middle one is piece A, the back panel. Above and below that are the matching top and bottom panels, piece B. To the left is piece C, the left inside panel, and its opposite panel is to the right, piece D. The small front panel, piece E, is at the bottom. The green pieces and the matching liners, pieces F through I, the blue rectangle is piece J for the optional front mirror element. 
We'll focus on the box pieces first. But if you plan to use the 6 by 9 inch acrylic mirror from my materials list, don't resize any of the design or the components won't fit together. Now first, let's cut just the box pieces. Hide the grouped green pieces and the blue piece using the eye icons in the layers panel. Our book nook box is now ready to cut. The box will take up to an hour to cut on a Cricut, so make sure you have time to stick around before proceeding. Cut the box pieces on heavy chipboard. Check that the right machine is listed in the top right corner and then click make it. You should see five mats on your prepare screen. The chipboard I'm using is 11 by 11 inches, but we can leave the material size at 12 by 12 inches. We won't have the chipboard right against the top left corner during cutting, so drag the cut shapes on each machine mat about an inch in from the top and left edges. You might need to rotate pieces, just use the curved arrows at their top corner, or move some to a different mat. Since the chipboard won't go all the way to the right or bottom edges, don't place anything within an inch of those boundaries. Click back on the first mat and then click continue. On the make screen, click browse all materials and type chipboard in the search bar. Select the 2.0 millimeter option and then click done. Cricut Design Space might prompt you to calibrate your knife blade. If it does, just follow the software's directions. Now we can't adjust the pressure, but if you're cutting the chipboard and the Remember Material Settings box is available, check it to save time between cuts. Place your chipboard on a purple strong grip machine mat so its left edge is about 1 8 inch in from the printed grid on the mat. That way, the gray roller won't hit the edge of your chipboard. Use a brayer to adhere your chipboard really well to your mat. Then, and don't forget this, add painter's tape or masking tape to the four edges, securing the chipboard to the mat. Be sure to keep the tape away from where the cuts will go, but it's okay if it goes under the rollers. Just smooth it out. Do not, however, wrap the tape around the edges of your mat as that will cause issues. Now carefully check that your knife blade is clean and load it in clamp B. Then move the white star wheels on the roller all the way to the right so they won't jam on the chipboard. Load your prepared mat into the machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. And remember, don't go anywhere. And don't be alarmed by the time left shown on the screen either. While every machine is different, none of my test cuts took all of the planned passes to go through the chipboard. But how can you tell? So keep an eye on your machine and the countdown on the screen. For the first few passes, the cuts will sound pretty loud as the knife starts cutting, and you might be able to tell the lines are getting deeper. But as the blade gets closer to the chipboard's back, it's harder to tell how deep the cuts are. Some of my test cuts were mostly cut after the eighth pass, so that's a good time to start checking. On the last cut of the eighth pass, press pause on your machine. When the machine stops, find a corner of the cut shape furthest from the blade. Carefully lift the corners tape and gently curve the mat down to release a few inches of the chipboard. Check if the cut is complete by looking or running your fingers under the back. If it's not done and you can't feel or see the shape on the back, it probably needs a few more passes with the knife blade. Press the go button to continue cutting and check again soon. If it feels almost done or you can tell that the cut is complete, another pass with a knife might actually damage your machine mat. In that case, I recommend finishing any incomplete cuts with a craft knife and a self-healing mat. So unload the mat and then remove the tape. Go slowly to avoid damaging the chipboard surface, especially near the box pieces. Flip the mat over and peel it back to release the chipboard. If the cuts went a bit deep and are visible on the mat, try using the 1.5 millimeter setting instead from this point on. If the cuts didn't go completely through, put your chipboard on a self-healing mat and carefully finish the lines with a craft knife. Before you cut the next mat, take the knife out of the clamp and carefully remove any dust or debris or little bits from the chipboard and then put it back in. And then just follow the same steps to cut and remove your remaining pieces from the mat. 
Here's what the cut pieces for my book nook box look like. We need to cut the liners and optional mirror before assembling the box, but we'll get back to this soon. Cut the polycarbonate for a one-way mirror. Back on your canvas in Cricut Design Space, hide everything but the blue rectangle on the right, piece J. Check that the right machine is listed in the top right corner and then click Make It. You should see one mat on your prepare screen. We'll place the polycarbonate in from the edges again, so drag the shape so it's an inch in from the top and left sides, and then click Continue. We're going to trick the Cricut a bit here. There isn't a setting for thin polycarbonate, but the Basswood 132nd setting worked great in my tests. So click Browse All Materials and type Basswood in the search bar. Select the 1 slash 32 option and click Done. And we'll use the knife blade again. Leave the protective film in place and then put the polycarbonate about one eighth of an inch in from the left side on the purple strong grip machine mats grid. It's thin enough that it won't interfere with the white star wheels on the right side if it goes past the grid a bit. Use a brayer to adhere the material and then peel off the top protective layer. Use painter's tape or masking tape to secure it on all four sides. Make sure your knife blade is in clamp B and that it's clean and keep your star wheels to the right just like we did before. Load your prepared mat into the machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. And just like the chipboard, keep an eye on your machine as it cuts. Use the same steps to pause and check the progress. Some of my polycarbonate tests were complete in fewer than 18 passes. When it's done, unload the mat, flip it, and roll it back to release the material. And here's the cut polycarbonate for our one-way mirror. Option one, cut the liner pieces using cardstock or paper. If you'd like to line the inside of your box with colored or patterned cardstock or paper, go back to your canvas and Cricut Design Space and hide everything other than the green pieces. From the left, the first two are piece G's, so one will be the bottom and the other will be the top liner. Next is piece F, the back. If you're using the mirror instead, you can hide piece F. And then piece H, the left liner, and piece I, the right liner. There isn't a liner for the front panel, but you can add decorations to cover it at the end. I'm going to use black cardstock for all the liners, so everything can stay like this. If you want to use different papers, use the color box to change the piece's colors and split them for cutting. Check that the right machine is listed in the top right corner, and then click Make It. The number of mats on your prepare screen will depend on the materials you're using. Change the material size if you're using something other than 12 by 12 inches. If everything looks good, click back on the first mat and then click Continue. On the Make screen, select your material settings. For 65 pound cardstock, use the medium cardstock 80 pound setting with more pressure for cleaner cuts. Place your first mat's cardstock or paper face up on your green standard grip machine mat and use a brayer to make sure it's fully adhered. Check that your fine point blade is clean and in clamp B. You can move the white star wheels back along the roller too. Then load the mat into the machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. When the cut is finished, unload the mat, flip it over, and roll it back to release the material. If necessary, use a scraper tool to remove pieces left on the mat. And then follow the steps to cut the remaining liners. Here's what the cut pieces for my inner liners look like. Option 2. Using images with print then cut. For another liner option, print then cut my forest PNGs or your own. Follow the steps at jennifermaker.com slash DIY money holders to prepare the photos or edit your own to print. Print them on normal printer paper, then use the copy paper 24 pound setting with more pressure using a fine point blade and a green standard grip machine mat. Step three, assemble your book neck. Assemble the box sides and bottom. Now let's start putting it all together. Gather the six chipboard pieces and matching liners if you made them. Match everything face up using the reference sheet to help. 
If you're making a mirror version, piece A won't have a liner. And piece E, the arch, doesn't have a liner and will go at the very end. Grab your crop glue and a brayer. And let's start with piece C and liner H to prepare the left side panel. Make sure the ovals are in the correct positions. Add a thin line of glue to the face of the chipboard around the edges and just a bit in the center. Too much glue will warp the material, so be careful. A brayer can help smooth and adhere the layers. Complete the other side, and remember the sides are essentially mirror versions of each other. Then finish the bottom and the top and let everything dry. If you're making the infinity mirror, get your adhesive backed mirror and piece A. Leave the mirror's protective film, but remove the backing paper and apply it to the chipboard. Now to put the box together with hot glue and some helpful finger protectors so you don't burn yourself. I'm working on my easy to clean self-healing mat, but you can use butcher paper to protect your table or scrap paper or something like that. Plug in and turn on your hot glue gun and put on the hot glue finger caps before touching any hot glue. Place the back panel A and left side PC face up so the liner and mirror are visible. Hold the back panel perpendicular to your work surface so the left long edge is facing you. Apply a thin line of hot glue along the edge. While the glue is still malleable, lower the back panel to touch the left inner edge of PC. You can adjust the pieces a bit before the glue sets, so make sure the tops and bottoms line up and the joint is straight. The left edge of the back panel where you applied the glue should be flush against the side panel. About 1 8 inch of PC on the inside will be covered, and the two cutouts will face the back panel. Don't worry about any glue squishing out for now. Press against the hot glued edge with firm pressure to keep the panels at a 90 degree angle until it dries. That's where the finger protectors are really going to help. You can add more hot glue to the outside corner to keep it secure. If glue seeps to the inside, you can carefully peel it off the mirror, but it won't be very noticeable on the liners. The outside of the box doesn't need to be pretty. Your books will hide the joints. Grab the right side panel, piece D, and repeat the process on the other side edge of the back panel. The sides of your box are now complete. Place the partially assembled box so the top edge is flat against your work surface. From the top, it resembles an upside down U. Now grab a lined piece B for the bottom. Apply hot glue along all three visible edges of the assembled box. Position the bottom panel on top so the liner faces down and the edges match. Hold it until dry. Add more glue along the outer joints if needed. Once everything is secure and dry, flip the box back over. We'll leave the top of the box off for now so we can add decorations inside. Assemble and attach the one-way mirror. The one-way material needs to go between the viewer and the infinity mirror to complete the illusion. I'm going to show you how to process with the polycarbonate and window film, so grab them, a ruler, marker, and scissors. Trace a rectangle a bit larger than 6 by 9 inches on the window film and cut it out. We'll trim it to perfectly match the mirror in a bit. Place the polycarbonate unprotected side up. Starting at a short end of the film, carefully peel up an inch of the backing to expose the adhesive. Lower the film's exposed area to the polycarbonate's top edge. Since we'll cut the film larger, it goes over the sides. Slowly remove the rest of the backing from top to bottom, pressing down as you go to adhere the film to the polycarbonate. If you notice a wrinkle or alignment issue, just peel it up enough to adjust and continue. And don't worry about bubbles, we can fix them. It's like adding a screen protector to your phone, but more forgiving. Use your brayer with firm pressure to smooth out the film and remove any air bubbles. Trim away the excess film around the edges with scissors. Remove the protective film from the other side of the polycarbonate and your one-way mirror is now ready. Decide which side of the mirror shows less reflection. That side will face out. Mine was the side with the window film. 
It's easier to install the mirror once most decorations are in place, but we need to mark the spot so we don't put anything in the way. The placement is up to you, but I'm going to secure it about a third of the way in from the front. If the material is too close to the front, outside light could interfere with the infinity effect and seeing the decorations. But at this distance, the top panel will help block the light so you can see inside. And you can add decorations in front of it too. Wrap the one-way mirror in a soft cloth and set it aside for now. Use a pen or pencil and ruler to make straight lines along the panels where the mirror will go. I'll use three inches in from the front. Add the decorations. Now for my favorite part, the decorations. I'm using lots of miniatures and floral decor to make an enchanted forest, but you can use any theme you like. I have written notes for my full process in the tutorial over at jennifermaker.com slash DIY book nook. But here are some highlights and a few tips. If you're making an infinity mirror version of your scene, decorate the back first and don't put anything on your line for the mirror. Pay attention to the placement of your items and note how they'll look when they're repeated infinitely. I'll show you how to install the mirror when we're ready. If you plan to add lights or anything else to the side cutouts, leave yourself enough space to reach the item and move it around. We'll remove the protective film from the back mirror later, so make sure you can still access it too. Once the back is decorated, grab the one-way mirror. Starting with the bottom panel, apply a thin line of hot glue along the mirror placement line that you drew earlier. But don't glue the sides yet. With the front facing out, lower the mirror to stick the bottom edge into the glue. Make sure the edges match the sides lines. If the mirror is bent, you'll get a warped funhouse effect, which is probably not what you want. Once the glue dries, apply more along the mirror's front left edge where it meets the left side panel. Use the line to keep the mirror straight and hold it to dry and then finish the other side. Now the infinity mirror is complete. The illusion won't be perfect yet though. So add decorations in front of the mirror covering any gaps. Try not to scratch the surface. Add the lights, box top, and finishing touches. Light really makes a book nook shine. Bright light inside the box makes everything easier to see and improves the infinity mirror effect. I'm using LED strip lights and several strands of fairy lights, but you can experiment with whatever you want, of course. I do recommend that you use LED lights, however, for safety. Make sure your lights work and add batteries or remove battery protector tabs as needed. Incorporating the lights really depends on your theme and decorations. For fairy lights, keep the battery pack on the outside and feed the free end through one of the cutouts until they're all inside. We'll secure the battery packs later on. I wove some fairy lights into the trees, but you can create many different looks with them. Glue dots work well for securing the wires to the box and decorations. Adding the strip lights to the top takes a little preparation, but it is totally worth it. Unroll the lights until you get to the very end where they're attached to the roll. Find the closest spot on the light strip where it can be cut, the scissors icon. Make sure your lights are off and then cut there. Now there's a free end that fits in the cutouts. Feed it through a top cutout. Pull the strip all the way through, but don't let it fall in and mess up your decorations. Place the top panel face up and pick a short end to be the front edge. Draw straight lines on both surfaces where the one-way mirror will hit the top panel, so mine are about three inches in from the front edge. We'll only add lights behind this line to keep the infinity mirror effective. Put the panel on the box and check that the line matches the mirror. Place the panel face up with the front closest to you. There are many ways to attach the lights, just leave a quarter inch open along the mirror line, each side and the back to hot glue the panel in place later. 
We'll start adding the lights at the top's back corner nearest the cutout where the strip comes in. So make sure you know which one that is. Near the battery pack cord, peel off just a bit of the light strips backing to reveal the adhesive. A weeding tool could really help here. Starting a quarter inch in from the corner, attach the strip's exposed adhesive to the inside of your top panel along the back edge. Stick the light straight across until you're a quarter inch from the other long edge. Bend the lights to make a tight turn in the other direction, leaving a small loop at the end. Stick the next line down adjacent to the first one. Continue peeling off the backing and attaching the lights in sections until you're close to the mirror line. Cut any excess lights at one of the scissor icons. Now we can attach the top panel to complete our book nook. Put the panel in place and turn on your lights. Look in from the front to make sure you like everything. Remove the top and make any adjustments now. If the front of the lights are really visible, you can even add some decorations to hide them on the top panel. Next, peel the protective film off the back mirror. Carefully clean all the mirror surfaces with rubbing alcohol and a soft cloth to remove fingerprints, dirt, or residue. Get your hot glue gun and finger caps ready. Put all your light cords and battery packs outside the box and out of the way. Apply hot glue to just one section of the box's top edge. I'll start with the back. Lower the top in place, making sure everything lines up. Then carefully insert the tip of your glue gun between the top and one side panel to glue that edge. Once that glue dries, do the same thing to attach the other side panel. To add the front arch, add a thin line of hot glue to the back outside edges of piece E and press it against the front top. You can even add decorations to your front panel like I did with some moss. Let's organize the battery packs to finish. The fairy lights have a switch that I need to flip, so I use two medium-sized glue dots for each battery pack and attach them to the top of the box. For the strip lights, make sure the batteries are inserted and the remote works. Then attach its larger battery pack to the box's back with several medium-sized glue dots. Securing the cords to the outside with duct tape or masking tape will keep them from getting pulled off. It will all be hidden by books, but here's how mine looked. And you're done! Here's what my finished DIY book nook looks like. Isn't it just so cool? I love this. Now you can place it on your favorite bookshelf and admire your work while you're reading your next awesome book. Turn off all the lights in the room to make the infinity mirror effect stand out even more. Your friends and family are going to be so amazed that you made this. It's so neat. So if you've got questions, let me know because I've got answers. Leave your question below this video or ask over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And I would love to see your book nook. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.